Now, good people, welcome back to another video. In the video before the video before this video, <laughs> we were upgrading that machine right over there, my PC, and I brought you guys through the journey of installing the RTX 3080 graphics card from NVIDIA and the value benefits that I was expecting to get. But something else that I did not share that I also upgraded was the storage. Initially, I had a 2 terabyte 3.5 inch hard drive, the spinning type, plus a 1 terabyte silicon power M.2 PCIe SSD, which is actually fast, but it's a Gen 3. But as you might have seen, because we're going for a much bigger RTX 3080 graphics card, the massive old 3.5 inch drive would not fit into that case. And so I went for a second SSD drive and this will be my primary drive. It's a Gen 4 drive, not a Gen 3 drive. So it's gonna be much faster, hopefully. Though, as you're gonna be seeing in a bit, that is not without issues. Now, this is the drive. It's another silicon power M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. <laughs> And this model is actually called the XS70. It's rated to give us read speeds of more than 7,000 megabytes per second and write speeds of more than 5,000 megabytes per second. And so I expect that it's gonna be giving us a much faster performance in a small footprint than this big old hard drive that has served as well over the past two years or so. So yeah, as you can see, the drive also comes with a heatsink attached to keep the temperature down, but you're gonna be finding out in not too long how far high the temperatures are going to be on this drive. So getting it set up and installed was quite a breeze, everything went well until we came to the speed test. And believe you me, instead of the 7000 plus Mbps sequential reads I was expecting from this drive, I actually ended up getting just about 3500 Mbps and that's half the speed that this drive is rated for. The reason why is actually that the PCIe configuration on the BIOS of this PC was set up to Gen 3 mode and the Gen 3 standard actually provides just about half the bandwidth that we get from Gen 4. So I had to somehow get into the Gen 4 team and that actually meant that I had to get a Gen 4 riser cable so that I can connect my GPU Gen 4 style and change the setting in the BIOS to Gen 4. Let's get into it. So now what we have here finally arrived is a Gen 4 riser cable. Let's get it open. And here it is. So basically what a riser cable is, it's an extension cable for a PCIe slot. That large PCIe slot that you normally fit your graphics card in on your motherboard. You can see that we have the male connector if you want to call this that on this one side. And on the other side we have the female connector. This male connector is what will plug into the motherboard and this other side is where our graphics card will go. So in a nutshell, riser cables like these are used by number one, guys who have small form factor cases like myself, in which you can't just plug in the GPU into the motherboard directly, because you know, that's not the layout of the case. The case is such that the GPU has to be on one side and the motherboard is on the other divide. It's like a sandwich layout. So the second common use for these riser cables is for guys who want to display their GPU such that they don't want the GPU to go horizontally into the motherboard. Some guys want their graphics card to be right against the side panel of the case so they can see the fans and so on. So they use a riser cable like this one from the GPU to the motherboard. Okay, let's get the case and let's see what happens. Okay, so now we have our graphics card set up. It's working. The riser cable is working at Gen 4 settings. So we have a Gen 4 riser cable. It's time to actually find out whether this was worth it because we know that the graphics card actually does not need Gen 4 to work. We were using the Gen 3 riser cable without any issues whatsoever at full performance for the graphics card. But then the issue was the SSD. So now we have Crystal Disk Max set up over here. Let's find out how fast we can now run the SSD. We'll just test the sequential reads and writes. A few moments later. 7,324 megabytes per second read. That is good. That is the full speed of the Gen 4 SSD and I am happy. <laughs> Let's wait and see how much write speed we're going to be getting. 5,833 megabytes per second. 
That is nice, so we are getting the full speed out of our Gen 4 SSD, the Silicon Power XS70. Now, maybe for good measure, we'll just also measure the Gen 3 SSD and see how fast reads and writes we're gonna be getting. It's also another Silicon Power SSD. Okay, here we are getting 2850, there about. Mm, it's a bit lower than I expected. We were going for about 3000, 3500. I don't know, maybe something, something, something has happened. But nonetheless, this is not bad. We are getting the full speed of the Gen 4 and close to the full speed of the Gen 3 SSD. So I expect that file transfers, reads, especially big files from the memory card, from the camera to the computer will be blazing fast. So this is much faster than the spinning 3.5 inch hard drive that I had which I'm sure does a maximum of about 600 Mbps. So file transfers should be very fast and very efficient. So the point here guys is if you run a small form factor case sandwich style like what I have over here and you have to use a riser cable to connect your GPU to the motherboard. If your riser cable is gen 3 and so you have to use a gen 3 setting in the BIOS, especially on such a motherboard as mine which is a Gigabyte B550, you should actually buy a Gen 4 riser cable so that you can do your RTX 3080 or whichever Gen 4 graphics card you have at a Gen 4 BIOS setting so that your SSD can also benefit and you can get the full speeds out of your SSD. It's not like you need Gen 4 for the graphics card really, but the SSD most definitely requires Gen 4. Now one more thing I'd like to check about the drives is what we're gonna be getting in as far as the temperatures are concerned because this is a tight case though both drives have some heat sinks on them. So over here we are running a full Crystal Disk Mark test on the Gen 4 SSD and while it's running hardware info right over here should tell us what temperatures we'll be getting from our drives. You can see that the drive temperature is about 54 degrees that's actually quite high. I don't know why, but I noticed this. I just guess this X70 from Silicon Power is just generally a hot drive, but 54 is tolerable. I don't really mind seeing as there's quite some space. There's a fan right above it. Now the second SSD is actually running over here at 53 degrees Celsius. And that is the one that is actually squished between the GPU and the case with the riser cable nearly in contact with it. So I expect that the temperatures would be a bit high. Yeah, sometimes you just have to accept and move on. <laughs> so now we are done running the full battery of tests on this Silicon Power X70 and you can see that the sequential speed is as expected more than 7000 Mbps and the writes is close to 6000 Mbps and the rest of the data is right down here including the random reads and writes for those of you who are interested and for our Gen 3 drive it's getting around 2800 Mbps sequential reads and 1900 Mbps sequential writes, which is a bit less than what it's rated for. I'm not sure whether changing the setting to Gen 4 has somehow made it also go a bit slower, but nonetheless, it's not too bad. It's supposed to do about 3500 maximum, but you can see that the randoms are actually quite good at around 500 apiece compared to the Gen 4 SSD, which was doing around 600. But that said, the point is this M.2 PCIe SSDs are actually much faster than that spinning 3.5 inch hard drive that I was using. And they're actually smaller, less bulky, much more suitable for such a build. Even if you have a massive ATX tower case, you still want to invest in some M.2 SSDs, especially with the prices having gone this far down over the years. And by the way, if you'd like to grab yourself one of these, links are down in the description below. If you have any comments, questions, there's a comment section down below. And while you're heading there, if you're not yet subscribed, please take the opportunity to hit that big old red subscribe button so that you do not miss the many more tech, apps, gadgets, fun spaces and so on kind of videos that are coming up. See you guys in the next one and as always, no pressure.